I always thought like I'm not good enough because I didn't go to art school. I'm an outsider. So I never really took myself seriously. I was just like, oh, you're doing it for fun. But like, but at the same time, I was like, how do I break through? How do I get taken seriously if I don't have like a formal art education? And how do I show at galleries and like museums? So there was always a struggle of like trying to figure out, am I good enough? So I was really questioning that a lot. Do I really need the credential to say I'm an artist? I'm Cynthia Alberto. I'm a weaver. I grew up in the Philippines um, as a child. I was always the shy child, but at the same time, like very curious. I think we painted a lot because like my parents were in America, so they, they would send boxes and boxes of like crayons and coloring books. I remember as a child, there was a lot of mending and repairing and we don't throw things away. When I moved to America, I was 13 years old and art was never really the big push. It was like, okay, how do I support myself? That was always been what my family, you know, said to us, you need to find a job that's going to make money, it's going to pay for a house, and make sure that you are well taken care of. So art wasn't a priority. I studied computers. I worked for Merrill Lynch. But then I wasn't happy. I was like, okay, this is, there's more to it than this. Maybe there's another journey. So I wore, I left that job and worked for the Village Voice. Letting go of computers and letting go of the income was very hard to do in the beginning. So I decided, okay, let me go back to school. So I went to FIT and I studied textile surface design because I figured, okay, again, I'm going back to the thing. If anything happens, I have to support myself, be able to <laughs> make money and really make sure that we can eat. You know, I have children now. And then I like somewhat validated myself. Oh, now, okay, I have a diploma. I can say I can take myself seriously. So that's always been the struggle. And then I said, well, I think it's time to open a weaving studio now. And I didn't know how, I had no idea. I just kind of like, again, intuitively, organically, it kind of grew where it is right now, where weaving hand is. Yeah, let's take this one. Okay, well, we're gonna do one last one. Gail has been working with you with this for a while now, right? I added the healing arts uh, program like five years ago where we work with government agency. We use weaving as a healing, not necessarily clinical, but a way of interacting with one another where we go to different sites or they come to us and we weave to heal, meaning that like we use our hands, motor hand skill, you know, up and down, really a lot of coordination and a lot of conversation. We really need that right now where we are, where technology is really somewhat taking over. And I don't disagree with technology, but I think we need to learn how to balance it. Healing arts is really very dear to me because it healed me. Weaving healed me and my family. The zero waste weaving started about five years ago. I started working with Tara St. James. So we started weaving her um, fabric scraps. We made fabrics out of it, and so that's how kind of like it developed, and we still work with her. So they collect all their fabric scraps, and we make a zero waste fabric for them. Yeah, and then you're gonna lay it on top of that one. Okay. Let me see, now you got the... I really, really think that we should all take responsibility. One of our main goal is like, if you have fabric scrap, don't put it all in the landfill. We could weave it for you. Yeah, so we, I think we need to be more conscious of that and take responsibility of what we put out there. I can't talk for everybody, but I know for me, it was a, a slow process. And then when I realized that it could make an impact to other people, and then it kind of like, open the door and I could share it with everybody. But I think I, 
I think now we are really consciously aware that we need to speak about all these issues. So the artists are all making a platform and a voice that everybody can hear about climate change, gender, race, colonial mentality, decolonization. So these are all new narratives, new words that we are all processing. I think the younger generation have a whole different take of where we are right now. So we have to unlearn and relearn what we know before to make sure that we can have a better place. It's chaos right now, but I think out of chaos there is order. So I always want to be positive that like all the chaos that's going on around the world, yes, we can be really negative about that and be angry and very, you know, but we need compassion and we need to have hope and we need to have love to make sure that the chaos in everything that's happening right now will have an order and that's what we can hope for. That's what I can hope for.